All day, every day, throughout the day, we are receiving sensory input and our brain is processing all that sensory input and trying to accomplish the things that we want it to accomplish, be it driving a car or walking somewhere or writing a report or even reading a book. Our brain is processing all of the sensory input it gets while we're asking it to do those things. So what is sensory input? It is the feels and the things that we're uh, sense of touch, uh, sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste, and like it or not, your body uh, takes cues from all that input. So what we need to do is control these cues and manage those cues and use them to our advantage. Consider something as simple as making a note. I need to remember to pick up my dry cleaning. So I go one of two ways. I either whip out my phone and type into Google Keep, uh, pick up dry cleaning, and hit back on my phone, turn it off, and put it in my pocket. Uh, the other choice is to take out a piece of paper or maybe a post-it and take my pen and write pick up dry cleaning on it. Think about the two activities and think about which had the most novel sensory input for your brain uh, to remember, for your brain to remember that it has to do a thing. Uh, so smell and taste are kind of out. Uh, I don't think you're getting a lot of variation there unless you like uh, sniffy post-it notes or flavored post-it notes. Yes, awesome idea, patent pending, patent pending. So uh, in one case, you took out your phone, which you do a million times a day, I'm sure, and you jabbed your thumbs at it at a perfectly smooth glass surface and you created text that looks exactly the same as all the other texts that you see on your phone all day. But the sticky note is a color and it's a certain thickness of paper and how does your pen feel writing on it and how does your pen feel in your hand? And what does your handwriting look like? Is it good? Is it bad? What color is your ink? There's just more sensation involved in writing that sticky note. Full disclosure, I work with electronics most of my day, so sticky notes are definitely out of my norm. But if you work at a sticky note factory and all you do all day is pull up sticky notes and write on them, maybe your phone is a more novel way. It's just, it just depends. But novelty is the trick. It just has to be something different that's unique uh, to that activity. That's where the magic seems to be. It's not the same thing that you've done over and over constantly. Uh, so let's go back to our phone that feels exactly the same time, exactly the same way, the same time, every single time we open it up to see if someone socialed our media. How do we make the phone experience more memorable and unique and therefore more memorable and unique? Uh, touch. So you probably don't have to look where your phone is in order to grab it. You probably know exactly where it is every single time and that habit makes that activity boring. So change it up if you need to. Uh, like you need to change up that process in order to make it more memorable and unique and stuff. I'm trying to get some time while I scroll. There we go. Grab your phone with your other hand. It'll probably be weird and awkward and that's what will make it memorable. Most phones have two ways of waking up, a power button and the one button to rule them all at the bottom. Most people usually use one button. Whichever that button is, when you want to do something memorable, turn your phone on with the other button. Type with a pinky instead of two thumbs. It will be slower, but it will definitely be more memorable. And for someone who, like me who uh, uses my phone for work, when I work, I have my phone in a different case on a belt clip on the other side of my body. And I really don't like the belt clip and the case is really bulky and it's heavy and it gets caught on stuff, but it is reinforcing that this is work time to my brain. And what I'm doing now is different from what I was doing before work and what I will be doing after work. Do you ever feel like you're taking your work home with you? Like you're still churning on stuff from the workday? Your body and your brain is taking cues, the sensory input that you're giving it, and acting accordingly 
even if you don't want it to. And when I gesture off screen, it doesn't count for anything. Gesture. Maracas. Very good. Uh, your brain is taking these cues, the sensory input you're giving it, and acting accordingly, even if you don't want it to. So change what clothes you put on after work. Put on a wristband, change your shoes, take off your shoes, convince your body and your brain that it is in a different mode right now. Uh, visual. Visual is a little tricky because when you look down at your phone, you're seeing pretty much the exact same thing that you're seeing in any kind of long-term work mode. Uh, changing the case makes sense, but if you're going to be going about your daily business and want to really quickly stop and do something memorable, that's a little bit hard to do. You're not going to change the case just for that. Uh, you might consider putting a funny sticker on the back of your phone, something colorful or even something that evokes an emotion from you. And whenever you need to do something that on your phone that's memorable, you can flip it over and look at the, that sticker and then flip it back and then do the thing. Uh, you're breaking up that visual experience. You're making it different. I mentioned Google Keep as a note-taking app earlier, and it has colors for its notes. And by all means, take the time to change the color on the note, even if all you do is change it through the kaleidoscope of colors and then set it back to boring white. You'll still get that sensory input. You're training your brain. Um, speaking of coloring things, uh, change your phone keyboard. Uh, most keyboards these days have themes, so you don't have to change how the keys are laid out or anything. Uh, you can keep that the same, but if you just change the color, you get kind of an easy visual indicator when you're in work mode or leisure mode or some other kind of weird mode I haven't even thought of. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, auditory, the hearing. This, can, this one can be a little tricky too especially if you're doing like a quick change and need to change back. Uh, if you're at work though or at a place where for an extended period where you need to keep remembering things that you do on your phone, it's easy to change the keyboard sound effect. So if it's taka taka, you know, makes a little clicky sound or even a vibration, but that's touch. But, you know, you're, you're changing it up. You're making this phone experience a little bit more novel so that it's a little bit easier to remember. Um, a lot of this stuff has been focused on your phone, and as much as we would like it to be, our phone is not a sensory input organ. Uh, your body can supplement any input to whatever activity you're doing. So like singing a song while you're doing something adds audio input. Standing on one foot uh, while you're writing a note adds touch sensory input. Lighting a scented candle or rubbing a car air freshener on your face gives you sense of smell input and makes your task more memorable. Uh, the bonus on the car air freshener is that uh, you'll also get the input of shame as your coworkers stare at you while you rub your face with new car smell. Don't worry, it's, it's efficient, it's about memory. Just tell them it's productivity. So where does this leave us? Easy. If you want to remember to get your dry cleaning, just use the wrong hand to get your phone and start singing a song and look at a picture of your long dead first pet on the back of your phone, Fluffy. I'm so sorry I didn't take better care of you. Eat a flaming hot Cheeto, turn your phone on with the button you don't normally use, open the note taking app with a different finger, type with your pinky, and change the color of the note and spin around in circles. Stand on one foot and hit save awkwardly. Then return your phone to the same pocket with the wrong arm and wrap up with a triple spin and end the, the thriller dance. And maybe you can sniff the car air freshener you keep around your neck. You, you do keep a car air freshener around your neck, right? I think that's it. Uh, I guarantee you with that much sensory input, you will not forget the whatever it is you were trying. <sighs> See, I didn't do the thing, I forgot. Uh, bonus points, because anyone who sees you do this won't ever forget it either.